David here with DIY Mountain Bike, working on our e-bike conversion. We're about two or three steps into the process. The first one was kind of figuring out what bike to pick for a conversion. Next one was, you know, opening and testing out the components for an e-bike, you know, like the kit itself. We're gonna start disassembling the bike, so let's jump into it. I'm gonna really concentrate a lot down in this bottom bracket area. I like to get the motor on quickly, make sure there's no issues that I might wanna return the kit, right? Hundreds of dollars wrapped up in a motor. You don't wanna have it, not have it fit on the bike. So we're gonna dig into the bottom bracket. So go through the tools here in a second, okay? Hey, David here, I'm breaking in real quick. That link I keep mentioning takes you to a step-by-step -step page picking the right bike, what's inside the kit, disassembling your bike, installing the motor, five steps for an e-bike wiring and components, putting your tail light on, routing and organizing, and then it goes into other items as well. Each one of these pictures you can click on is an article with, in this case, detailed instructions for installing the motor, what tools do you need, and then it includes a video. So I keep mentioning, go to that link below. This is why I've got it all organized in a nice clean format for you to take you from start to end. So let's go through real quick the tools you need for this disassembly. Hex stuff, this is hex wrenches, Allen wrenches, mostly for the handlebars, mostly for the handlebars. You're gonna need a pedal wrench, either a dedicated pedal wrench if you have a higher end bike that has a very thin you know, wrench area, or you can just use it, usually a standard 15 will work as well. A bottom bracket tool, something that fits your bottom bracket. Screwdriver most often you're gonna need, and then along with a puller, a crank puller, right? So this crank puller has a little socket that I'm gonna to use to take our crank bolts out, and then it's got the puller in. So Let's get into taking this guy apart. Oh, you know, as a quick little note, subscribe. I'm gonna be going through a whole, you know, build, right? You're gonna get downloads for instruction, tool list, where you can get the tools, where you can get your kit. All of that will be on my website, rideemtb.com. Thanks. So the first thing to come off is our pedals. I'm gonna, I've got a box with a whole bunch of new parts and I'm gonna replace these, but you can remove your pedals. I've broke this loose already. The important thing to think about is when you're removing the pedal, always position it so the handle's going back and you're pushing down. So handle is going back towards the rear wheel and you're pushing down. You do that and you'll get this right every time. It doesn't matter which side of the bike you're on. We got our pedals off. Next, we're gonna jump into our, all right, next, let's take our crank arms off. This is our crank arm. We're gonna take this off. The Bethane kit comes with a crank arm. So the puller, the crank puller, we use on this side, but the tool also comes with a socket. Fits in there nicely. You get that same pedal wrench, 15 millimeter, right? Put that in there, kind of hold it in place with your thumb a little bit. And break that loose. Pull out that crank bolt, all right? I'm spinning my crank puller back. Kind of take a look down in there. This tool that I've got is used for different size bolt heads. You can actually pull this guy off and use it on a smaller head like we've got in this situation. The reason why I pulled that off, you know what, let's get you in here. If you look down in there, my puller actually pushes, this part here will push against the end of the square taper inside there. So with that bigger tip on there, it would actually push on the outside of the crank arm itself I wouldn't be able to pull the crank arm off. All right, so I got that backed off. Screw that in. You want to get this in 
a bunch of good thread links. It's important, get that in there threaded and well. Do not use a wrench right away. You should be able to screw that in quite a ways by hand. Don't want to cross thread it. You cross thread it, you're going to basically ruin your crank arm if you ever want to use it again. And this one's a kind of a nice crank arm, pretty heavy duty. So you get that. So I got this screwed in tight. And you push on your puller. And you'll start to feel it pulling a crank arm off that square bottom bracket. So that's how that works. I'm gonna jump over and do the other side. So next is taking out our bottom bracket itself. They'll clear that shell out. Um, lots of folks will suggest taking the chain off and the derailleur off at this point. I would say do not do that. Hold off and wait to make sure your motor is gonna fit, okay? So if you've got a bottom bracket tool, you can grab that guy. Let me get this chain out of the way, nice and dirty. We'll get that, all right. <clears throat> Nice and loose. These can be very tight. So there's our cartridge. Itself a tang 68. So we know our bottom bracket width is 68 millimeters. It'll work perfect for the, the kit. All right, so it's the moment of truth. We're gonna slide on our mid-drive motor for the first time, make sure it fits, just so we know that you can proceed with taking the rest of this guy apart. So let's give this a whirl. Fits in there nice. Yeah, I like it. Might be touching right here. That's not bad. You can always put a small spacer on this side okay i like it what i was worried about most is having something that interferes this weld or if you've got cables that run down underneath the frame down the, down the bottom of the down tube and then back to the shifter i don't have that i've got all my cables up on top so let's keep taking this thing apart i'm going to put the bike up on the stand okay the next step is removing our chain so Give it a once over, look over the whole chain if you've got a master link. Obviously that's where you want to uh, remove this chain and I'll have a little picture of a master link that I'll drop on the video. If not, you're gonna have to use a chain removal tool. The thing you wanna do is to, when you're pushing the link out, the actual pin out, you don't want it to all the way, you know, come all the way out. Take a look where I'm at and remove it. So here's what I was talking about when I said you don't want to remove that pin or push it all the way out. Let's move up to the handlebars and work on our brakes. All right, so I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed. So go to your brakes and take your noodle off. So this part right here is your noodle and it fits in the brake stirrup, this is called a stirrup. So then we take up off our front stirrup. What's that do that gives us some slack line? If you were to take the front wheel off, which I'm gonna be doing, not required for the build, but it gives you some slack to work on the handlebars. Let's jump up to the handlebars next. Next, we get to work on our handlebars. For me, the shifter is coming off and I'm replacing my shifter, so this is the rear derailleur shifter 
I'm going to upgrade to one I'm going to use instead of a twist shifter on this 20 year old bike. We're going to take off our brake handles. We're going to talk, take off our grips as well, our handlebar grips. So we're going to start with the grips. Trick I've seen out there that you should not do, I'll see people spray you know, something like WD-40 inside there. Nearly impossible to get that cleaned out. And then forevermore, you're going to have a, a handle grip that slides. So always save these parts. You never know when you might need them. So I've got a, I think this is a two and a half millimeter hex. A small hole here. Take this off. Just slide it off for now. Next, usually it's a five or a six for our brakes. So here's a little trick. I'm gonna to try to make sure you can see this okay. There's a small slot in the handle, the brake handle assembly, and then in your locking nut and your thumb screw are slots as well. People always look at that and you think, oh man, that's like a, a flaw, but that is exactly what it's for. Remove your cable, pull it down, and then drop out your brake cable. So if you're gonna reuse your cable, you would at this point just lay that guy down, slide your handle, your brake handle assembly off. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'll fast forward you. So with our handlebars cleared off and our bottom bracket assembly removed, we're ready to jump into installing our mid-drive motor kit.